friends how are you all doing i'm august this is cozy rosie reads and this is the start of another weekly reading vlog i hope you all are doing super well today is saturday morning it is currently 8 30 a.m i'm almost ready to leave for a four hour road trip for a wedding day today. It is gonna be a very very long day. If you saw my vlog last week then you'll hear all about this and that as well. So this will just be a little recap. Winston says hello. So yes I am traveling four hours up north today for a wedding. Then what's fun is that after this wedding it's gonna be a six hour wedding so it's gonna be a long work day and so I'll be leaving the venue at 9 p.m and then I got a hotel because it's such a long drive. But uh, when I was telling my family about this, they're like, we're also gonna be up north. We're gonna be in a city that's like two hours away from you. So how about when you check out of your hotel on Sunday, tomorrow, you come up and join us. So that's what I'm gonna do and I'm really excited. So the wedding, if you're familiar with like Michigan geography at all, um, is in Harbor Springs, Michigan and also Bliss, Michigan. They're really close to each other. And then my hotel is in Petoskey, which is like right around the harbor from Harbor Springs. And then my parents are in Traverse City and they're staying in their RV. My sister is gonna come up and join them as well on Sunday. And then we're all gonna spend the night in the RV and then leave for back home on Monday. So it's gonna be a really jam packed weekend with a lot of traveling, hopefully exploring some cool new places and hanging out with family. Long intro, done. I promise we're going to talk about books because I started a book last night that I'm absolutely loving. You probably saw it in the montage and that is The Waves by Virginia Woolf. Oh my gosh, I got this copy when my partner and I went to Kalamazoo. We, we did like a whole day of thrifting and nature walks. It was definitely like last fall or something like that and this is just such a beautiful edition. This is the second Virginia Woolf book that I'm gonna be reading. I read Orlando many years ago. I wanna say maybe like five or six years ago at this point. And I really, really loved it, even though it took me a long time to get into it while reading it. <laughs> I was definitely taking everything super seriously. And then I realized I'm like, oh, this is supposed to be funny. This is supposed to be satirical. So reading this has been a true delight. I only read up to page, I think I'm on page 15. I'm on page 16 and I'm really loving this writing style, but I'm really curious to see where it goes. What's interesting about this book, and I noticed it when I was just casually flipping through it, it is entirely dialogue. So this is skipping quite a few pages ahead. This is page 117, but every single paragraph begins with quotation marks in this book. And the book opens with almost like this chorus of, I'm imagining children or maybe teenagers. There's Bernard, Susan, Rhoda, Neville, Ginny, and Louise. And, or Lewis. I think it's Lewis. I always say Louise in my head. And they're like saying all these things out loud that are like way too poetic for real people to say out loud. Like, I see a slab of pale yellow, said Susan, spreading away until it meets a purple stripe. I hear a sound, said Rhoda, cheap chirp, cheap chirp, going up and down. Like it's really odd and eerie, but where I got to page 16, the dialogue is way more spread out. And now these characters are speaking way more in like paragraphs and longer sentences. But the way this is written, one, it's very lyrical and beautiful. I really, really love it. But also these characters are saying what they're doing out loud. And they're also describing the scenery as if there is an omnipresent narrator when you're reading a normal book, like in third person or even in first person, when there's just descriptions of what characters are doing or what things look like, what the atmosphere is like, it's just said verbally in dialogue between these characters. So it's really odd, 
but super whimsical and very over the top. So we open up with one of the boys, Lewis. Lewis is up in a tree and he's alone. And he's talking about, they've all gone into the house for breakfast and I'm left standing by the wall among the flowers. It is very early before lessons. As if he's saying all this, because it does say he said these things out loud, but he's by himself. And then Ginny comes up into the tree and kisses him. And then Susan sees them kissing and she has a hissy fit and she goes and stalks off and like flops onto these tree roots and she's crying and upset. And then Bernard sees this and he goes, I saw you go, said Bernard. As you passed the door of the tool house, I heard you cry. I am unhappy. I put down my knife. I was making boats out of firewood with Neville. It's as if he's like explaining to Susan exactly what he was doing when he saw her, exactly how he felt. It's just so interesting. He's explaining this long thing of like, I saw you and everything he saw, but it's so beautifully written. And then it reads, I love, said Susan, and I hate. There's Winston again. I desire one thing only. My eyes are hard. Ginny's eyes break into a thousand lights. Hello. Okay, no one wants to see your butt. Rhodas are like those pale flowers to which moths come in the evening. Yours grow full and brim and never break, but I'm already set on my pursuit. I see insects in the grass, though my mother still knits white socks for me and hems pinafores, and I am a child. I love and I hate. I am absolutely loving this book and the writing style, but the entire book is dialogue, and I think that's really interesting and fascinating, and I'm really excited to read it. So. That is the book I'm bringing with me on this long weekend journey. It's also a holiday weekend in the States, so I am going to do some work in the hotel room um, because I still have stuff to do, but then I'm hoping to take Monday off um, because I'll be traveling with my family and then driving all the way back home. So it's gonna be jam-packed, very busy, but I hope relaxing and fun. But yeah, thank you all so incredibly much for being here, my friends. I hope you can get cozy and have fun and try travel with me. I will check in with you all very soon.
Good morning, friends. I am currently <laughs> still getting ready. I have mascara on this eye, not on this eye. I'm in my hotel room. The morning has flown by because I've spent the whole freaking morning editing and working. Even though I was up until two this morning working and editing, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm ready to like take a day off and hopefully take tomorrow off as well. But while I was at that beautiful wedding yesterday, holy shit, one of the most beautiful weddings I've ever seen uh, in my whole career. It was so intimate and intentional and stunning. This couple did everything themselves. She is a floral designer and so she designed all of the flowers. She designed all of the table decor. She also screen printed the napkins. She baked the cake and both of them beard their own brew for their own wedding day. Beard their own brew? Brewed their own beer. I can't remember which one I said. I think I said it wrong, <laughs> but it was amazing. And we went out at sunset and took some pictures and I left at nine, got to my hotel around 10 because dark country roads with no street lights. And then I lost my GPS signal. So I had no idea where the hell I was. Thankfully I screenshot my directions, always do that. Just in case you lose connection when you're out in the wilderness. Yeah, so this morning I've been editing. I had breakfast out on there like, balcony patio it was freezing out but i just brought my book i read a few pages did not read a whole lot this morning just because uh, so many emails came in yesterday for me from clients and inquiries potential clients so it's a holiday weekend but i was like if i can just respond to these this morning before i head to my parents rv i'll feel pretty good and I won't work again until Tuesday because it's a holiday weekend, you know? I should stop working. So that was, I'm done. I'm done now, but I have to check out of the hotel in like 20 minutes now. And I really need more coffee. So I might see if there's like a coffee shop around here. I might hang out. I'm in Petoskey. I might hang out in Petoskey for a little bit and then have to go drive almost two hours to go meet my parents. It's felt very go, go, go. I really hope I have time to like relax and actually read um, now that I'm done working and set good work boundaries for myself and like not respond to any more emails until I get home. Yeah, I just want to relax. I need that. Like I just want to sit and not move for a few hours and just read but I have a lot of traveling to do today, so. And then a lot of traveling to do tomorrow when I head home, okay. <laughs> all right, I'm going to boogie. I will see you all and check in with you very soon. Also, I'm loving my book, by the way, but I'm only like 20 something pages in, so not a whole lot to report.
his hometown of Omaha, Nebraska and bought a one-way ticket to Karachi, Pakistan. 
Karachi was one of the most populous cities in the world. By 1998, over 9 million people and a transportation hub with some of the most active airports and seaports in the region. In the commercial parts of the town, you could find all... Hi friends, 
I'm back home. It is currently Tuesday. I woke up in my own bed this morning. I came home yesterday around 6 p.m. Um, very exhausted. I fell asleep within the first three hours of being home. And today has just been uh, getting my life back together after yet another weekend away. I had such a lovely time up north with my family. It was such a lovely time. I didn't get to chat with you all once I got to my parents' RV, but the first night we made dinner at our little campground and then we went into town. We walked around and then we saw Marcel the Shell, which was really cute at this beautiful theater. And then we walked around the beach and the harbor and then we went back to the RV and I was exhausted and fell asleep while reading The Waves, which I will be talking about briefly here. Then the next morning, my sister and I went to a cafe. We got coffee. We went to some shops, met up with my parents and we just walked around and then we went to, it's now a historic site, but it used to be an asylum slash mental hospital in Traverse City and now they They've turned it into this beautiful place that has condos and tours and they also had a bookstore so we went to the bookstore i did end up getting a book there which i don't know i'm, I'm still trying to like rustle up the mental wherewithal to actually film a book haul at some point because i've accumulated so many books lately so maybe I'll do that <laughs> soon, we'll see. And then we went back to the RV, I packed up and went home. It's, it felt like it went by really, really fast, but it was so jam packed. And I was so exhausted from the wedding, from being on the road so much, driving so many hours, so many miles. I'm just happy to be back home. And then today has been catching up on all the emails I missed on my three day being away from emails and stuff. So catching up on emails, backing up all my files, like doing a lot of clerical stuff. My brain feels like it's in a million places at once of all the things I feel like I have to do now. Um, so I'm trying to like calm down. So I'm gonna go for a walk, <laughs> but I wanted to conclude this vlog and to tell you all as well, cause I have no idea how long this video is gonna be. And I feel like it might be at a suitable timestamp right now. If not, then it might be similar to my Chicago vlog where it's just a little short, a little sweet, like a little field trip road trip that you can hang out with me on. But I did want to tell you all, I am freaking loving The Waves by Virginia Woolf. I, I am adoring this book. I'm adoring it. I love it. I want to fly through it, but I also want to savor it. I'm annotating a lot. The sentences are beautiful. Like I am blown away at how much I love this book. It is so unique and weird and odd and fantastic. I don't know how to explain it. We're bouncing between six characters, three girls, three boys, as they grow up from childhood. And like I mentioned before, this book is entirely dialogue. And then we hit a point where all of a sudden there's no more dialogue and everything's italicized, which indicates the start of almost like a new chapter like this. And it's a description of like what the what nature is doing. It started out with waves and then it turns into like birds. And then once you enter this new like chapter, the children and characters that we're following are in boarding school and I'm currently on page 80 and now they're in college. So it's following all six of these characters as they grow up together, as they attend school and their different thoughts on experiencing the same like life milestones. And very soon here, once I get further into this book, um, I bet it's going to separate and they're all going to be having their own separate lives, which I find really interesting, but it continues to only be dialogue and describes like how they're feeling, what they're doing. I'm on the train. I am reading the newspaper. I see a man who looks like blah, blah, blah. And this is like the most poetic, beautiful writing. And it's so introspective with these characters. This is one from the character Rhoda. It says, there was a star riding through clouds one night. And I said to the star, consume me. Identity failed me. We are nothing, I said, and fell. Oh my god, it's just like so, so good. This is from the character Susan. I do not want people when I come in to look up with admiration. I want to give to be given in solitude in which to unfold my possessions. This one's from the character Neville. Then suddenly descended upon me the obscure, the mystic sense of adoration, of completeness that triumphed over chaos. Nobody guessed the need I had to offer my being to one God and perish and disappear. Should I seek out some tree? Should I desert these form rooms and libraries and the broad yellow page in which I read Cadulus for woods and fields? 
Should I walk under beech trees or saunter along the riverbank where the trees meet united like lovers in the water? But nature is too vegetable, too vapid. She has only sublimities and vastitudes and water and leaves. I begin to wish for firelight, privacy, and the limbs of one person. It is just so beautifully written. I, I love it so much. I can't wait to see where it goes. It's just so unique and odd and quirky and different and beautiful. And this is, it's everything to me right now. Like I'm, I am loving it so, so much and I'm just blown away. Um, so hopefully I can carve out some time today to read it. I definitely feel like I'm struggling to get back into the swing of things, which kind of stinks because I just made a vlog of like getting my life together. So hopefully tomorrow will be a little bit easier, but today just feels like such a big catch up day. Like I want to go for a walk, but I also need to go grocery shopping but I also feel like I need to edit more, but I also, you know, there's just all these things that I wish I could do all at once, um, but I can't. So that is that, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me. This weekend was so freaking lovely. Photos of the wedding are up on my Instagram. If you want to take a peek, I'm so proud of them. I, I love these images so much. I love this couple so much. It was amazing. It was so wonderful to spend time with my family outside of the city we live in and almost like a you know family vacation. It's been so long since we have all gone on vacation together as a unit, as a family, and it was so lovely. And to be reading a lovely book at the same time and actually find time to read it on this trip too was just amazing to me. I had so much fun and I'm really grateful. Just thank you all so incredibly much for being here. Uh, if you made it to the end, we obviously have to comment some waves as well as some shells, some shell emojis. And my mom made the comparison. She's like, it's like how fitting that we saw Marcel the shell on this trip while you're reading a book with a woman in a shell. And I'm like, <laughs> I didn't even think of that. <laughs> so let's definitely do some waves, some shells. But yeah, if you made it to the end, I'd love to see your emojis. And I can't wait to see you all again very soon for my next video. Stay cozy, my friends. Bye.